next lesson today is going to be on the effects of impurities on boiling point and freezing points. Um, first, let's go over some definitions. So first we have boiling point elevation. That is the boiling point of a sample is raised when impurities are present. Now we have freezing point depression. Freezing point depression is when the freezing point of a sample is lowered when impurities are present. So an example of this that you guys have probably encountered would be like salt water. When you have salt water um, especially if you think of like ocean water, um, if you took that really, really high concentration of salt, it's going to boil above the normal temperature of like 212 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's going to freeze below that, the um, normal freezing temperature. So it'll freeze below 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you ever go up anywhere really cold where, you know, the water would be below 32 and it's still liquid, it's because of that salt in it. And this is useful to us in a lot of ways in our daily lives because we use salt to lower the freezing point of ice in the winter or of water so that we don't get ice on sidewalks and roads. And in chemistry, it can be also very useful because it helps us to determine solute concentration. And um, we're just going to kind of talk about how we can use this to do the solute concentration here for a minute. So when we look at it, the absolute value of the difference in the pure and impure boiling or freezing point is directly proportional to the molality of that solution. So, um, molality is a word we don't hear a ton in chemistry, so we're just going to go over that definition for a minute. So molality, not molarity, molality, that is equal to the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. So molality is mole solute divided by kilograms of solvent. And we have some useful equations that relate the difference in the temperature, the freezing point temperature, and this molality. For the freezing point,
we have the change in the temperature, and that's the absolute value of that change, is equal to KF times B, which is equal to molality, times I, and the boiling point one, is delta T, or change in temperature equals KB, times B. And KF and KB are just constants. And these constants vary with the sol um, with whatever solvent you're using. Okay, and then we also have our B, which we said was the molality. And then we have that I term in the freezing point equation. And that is simply the number of particles in the molecule of the solute. That's a little strange to think about, but a quick example makes that pretty easy to see. So like for NaCl, if you had that for your solute, that would just be two because you have sodium and chlorine. Or like if you had barium fluoride, BaF2, that would be three because there's three atoms in that. Okay, so now this is kind of the general chemistry and the math portion of that. So let's look at an example problem and see if we can apply this now. So we have two containers of water, and they boil at different temperatures. Now what can be concluded about the sample with the higher boiling point? So we have higher boiling point. And that higher boiling point means we're going to have a higher delta T. And since they're both water, we're going to have the same K. So that's not going to change anything. So therefore, the concentration of impurity or just solute must be greater in the one with a higher, higher boiling point. Alright, and that's how impurities can affect boiling and freezing points.